So for this class, you're going to need maybe a scarf or a strap and um, maybe a pillow or a block to sit on. So we'll get started in a comfortable seat. Kind in a cross-legged position here. Let the spine be nice and long. The shoulders move down away from the ears. Crown of the head reaches up. Let the eyes soften close. Begin to just dive into the breath. So drawing in some big inhales. And some full exhales. Just allowing that breath to start to anchor the mind into this moment. Cutting ties with whatever is happening outside of here and now. So that you can really just show up for you today. Now that you've done the hard work of actually getting to the mat. Begin some big breaths into the belly. And then fill up the ribs all the way to the collarbone. And exhale, empty the lungs. Really empty the lungs fully. So much so that the next inhale is just automatic. These are deep, full body breaths. And the eyes soften close so you can start to gaze inward and just notice how you're feeling. Without any judgment, without any expectation. And maybe after a few of these big breaths, you start to just feel that connectedness to the source, to your higher power to the strength that's within you to face whatever obstacles are being thrown your way during challenging time. Maybe you can strip the back of the throat to create an ocean like sound with your breath. Engaging Jai Pranayama. Take a few more rounds of this breath as we start to set an attention for our practice today. And maybe it's just to keep checking in throughout practice, to keep dropping into the breath, dropping into the present moment, releasing the thoughts that arise. Bringing in a little more calm and stillness into your mind and your body. Maybe there's someone or something that could use a little extra energy sent their way. Whatever your intention is, go ahead and gather it above your head, sweeping the arms up, taking a big breath in as you send it out to palms meet. Exhale, draw the hands to the heart. Inhale deeply through the nose. Open mouth, let it go. We'll open the practice with one ohm. Feel free to chant or just listen. Inhale to chant. Um. Turn the corners of the mouth up to find you a little smile. You made it to the mat. You should be happy for that. Let's go ahead and switch the cross of the legs. So bringing the other foot in front here. So we're finding balance. It might feel a little funny to sit the, the other way, but just want to balance out the body. You're going to inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, interlace the hands behind the head and draw the chin in towards the chest. 
So breathe space into the back of the neck. Opening it up. If you guide your elbows a little closer together, you'll probably feel the stretch intensify a little bit. Be careful not to round the spine too much. So keep a nice long spine. It's just the neck that's getting a nice little stretch here. Breathing. And then release the hands down to the lap. Draw a little arc with the chin along the collarbone, taking it from one side to the other. Eventually starting to get a little bit wider with the arc so that one ear comes to the shoulder. And we roll around to find the same on the other side. Deal with whatever sensations are happening in the neck. Such an easy time for us to carry tension in our bodies. And for me, the neck is one of those places that I like to carry my tension. So allowing it to release, relax, and soften. Next time that your left ear comes to the left shoulder, sustain. And bring your right hand underneath your right hip. The right sit bone and your left arm up and over. Starting to guide a little space into the right side of the neck. So my left hand comes to the right temple. And I'm not pulling, I'm just allowing that gentle pressure of the hand and gravity to do the work of opening up the right side of the neck. You can take your gaze down if that feels good, making, making the hand come to maybe more of the back of the head. Or you could take your gaze up, letting the hand come to maybe more forehead area. Finding whatever spot feels best for you. Relax the jaw, relax the face, take some deep breaths. And then we'll gently release the hand and and take out the right hand from underneath you. Draw the chin into the chest. And then right ear to right shoulder. The left hand comes underneath. And right arm comes up and over. Guiding space into the left side of the neck. Softening where you can, breathing, breathing deeply so that new oxygen comes to those cells, allows them to relax, allows them to release that fight or flight mode. And you can guide your chin in towards the chest, bringing the in more to the back of the head to get a stretch along the back side of the neck, or you can guide your chin up, the hand coming more towards the forehead, getting a stretch more along the front side of the neck. And then we'll gently release Guiding the chin back into the chest and lifting the gaze. Take some shoulder shrugs here, moving in one direction and then the other. And then we're going to come onto all fours. So wrists beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips. Let's just take a few cat cows here to get the spine warmed up. Inhaling, head and tail lift. Exhaling around the spine. Inhaling for cow, big breath in as the chest moves forward. Exhaling for cat as the belly draws in towards the spine. Connect breath and movement. And then we'll come back to a neutral spine. We're going to root into the left hand and sweep the right arm up to the sky. Find a reference point, a place where the fingers point to. 
big breath in as you exhale for the needle right arm underneath the left right shoulder to the ground and my the side of my uh, forehead is also on the ground bringing the right cheek to the mat and press the right hand into the earth and feel that kind of open the shoulder a little bit more you can keep pressing the left hand into the ground you can also reach it up towards the front of the mat or you could reach it up and back trying to find the right thigh eventually. I like to take a little sway in my hips here. Be soft in the face and the jaw. And then we're gonna press back into the left hand and sweep the right arm back up. Notice the space you've opened up there. The fingers maybe go just a few inches further. Lower the right hand down. The left arm sweeps up, big breath in, as you exhale, thread the needle. Left shoulder to the ground, left cheek to the mat, press into the back of the left hand and feel that activate the stretch. Maybe right hand reaches towards the top of the mat, maybe it reaches towards the sky and around towards the left hip. Maybe there's a sway in the hips. And we'll press into the right hand, scoop the left arm up, and exhale, left hand down. Take the, let's see, take the left toes to the mat behind you, pressing the left foot down, left heel towards the ground, so you get a nice calf stretch here. And then draw the right knee to the nose. Feet of pose, hold it there, draw the belly in, engage the core, and then inhale it back for a three-legged dog. Exhale, bring the right knee to the ground, just behind the wrist, and then swivel the right foot to the right, so the shin is parallel with the short end of the mat. Right hand plants and left arm sweeps up and over, stretching the left side body. And then, yeah, so it's a nice long diagonal stretch here. That's it. Taking a few breaths into the side body. Maybe take your gaze up. And then we get light in the right hand. Draw the left hand down the left leg, right arm up and over. Stretching this time along right side body. And then we'll take both hands back to the ground, turning to come into cheetah pose again. Knee comes in, right knee to chest. And then inhale it back, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee and stack the hip, opening right side body. Tendency here is for the right shoulder to pop up, so keep drawing the right shoulder towards the ground. Left toes face forward. Sometimes they want to turn in, so draw the left toes forward. And that left heel is working its way towards the mat. Next inhale, straighten the leg, square the hips, and then bring the left knee in between the hands. So my shin is going to be parallel with the long edge of the mat. It's, a, it's kind of a funny, sort of uh, modified pigeon pose. Lower the back knee, and then reach back with the left hand for the left foot. So you're getting a nice quad stretch, and your right hand can be here just kind of balancing. Draw the left foot towards the left hip. Yeah, so getting a nice stretch in the left quad and hip flexor. And then gently release, tuck the toes, lift the back knee, cheetah pose, knee to nose. Right knee comes in, and then we plant the right foot in between the hands. Left hand's going to root down under the left shoulder. Right arm's going to sweep up for a twist, gazing up over the right hand. Breathe. And then right hand plants down on the mat. Bring the left foot up to meet the right. Ragdoll pose. Feet or hips with distance here. Grab opposite elbows. A little bend in the knees helps protect the low back and hamstring. 
Take a little rock side to side. Shake out the head to relax the neck. Run the tongue around the front of the teeth to relax the jaw. Sprinkle the fingers back towards the mat, tip top the feet together, bend the knees generously to roll up the spine, stacking one vertebra on top of the other, head the last to lift, and then arms reach up on a big breath in. And as you exhale, dive forward, bending the knees as you hinge from the hips. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step the feet back to plank pose. And then lower knees, chest, chin. Keep the pelvis up as the chest and chin lower. Inhale, bring the pelvis to the ground. Take the hands wide of the mat, tint the fingers, elbows face up, foreheads on the mat. Tops of the feet are pressing down, glutes are relaxed. Inhale, lift the chest. Chest lifts the head. Exhale, lower chest, lower head. Begin to roll like this, inhaling up, chest first and then head, lowering down, chest and then head. Taking these cobra rolls where this beautiful symbolism of the head following the heart. Maybe dedicating your day to this action of leading with the heart. Next time you come up, sustain. Try not to dump into the low back. So if it starts to feel like it's pinching, you can come down a little bit. But otherwise, try to straighten the arms. Bring the chest forward. Bring the shoulders down away from the ears. Breathe. Release the glutes. And then gently lower back down. Plant the hands underneath the shoulders, come up to all fours. Right toes are going to come behind you and press into the right heel so you get a nice little um, calf stretch here. And then draw the left knee in, cheetah pose. And then three-legged dog. Bring the left knee back between the hands a few inches behind him. And then the left foot swivels to the left. So it becomes parallel with the short end of the mat. Right, root, right foot roots and we sweep the right arm up. Growing long in the right side body. So reach, reach, reach the fingers diagonally away from the outside of the right foot. Creating length there. Take some deep breaths. See if you can grow even longer. Next inhale is going to guide you up. We're going to slide the right hand down the right leg. Left arm up and over. Breathing into the left rinse. And then we'll cartwheel the hands back down. Find the cheetah pose. Left knee in towards the chest. Then inhale it back. Three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee, stacking the hip, opening up the left side now. Left shoulder wants to pop up, so draw it back down. Knee lifts high, foot works its way towards the right hip. Right heel is working its way down, right toes are facing forward. Don't forget your breath. Nice inhale, we come back to three-legged dog. Exhale, knee comes in between the hands. The shin is parallel with the long edge of the mat for that modified pigeon pose. Left hand's going to root down, so for a little bit of balance, right hand's going to reach back for the right foot. I forgot to say this on the other side, but if this isn't quite available, that's where that scarf comes in handy. So you can wrap it around the foot and draw it in like this. A few deep breaths, getting nice stretch in that right quad and hip flexor. If you're like me, you're spending a lot of time sitting right now, so it's good to do a stretch to reverse the effects of that. And then right toes come back to the mat and tuck under, hands plant, and the left knee comes in for cheetah pose. With as much control as possible, plant the left foot between the hands. Right hand roots down under the right shoulder, and the left arm sweeps up for a twist. 
Gaze up. And then left hand lowers, bring the right foot up to meet the left. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, reaching up, look up. As you exhale, soften the knees, fold forward. At the end of your exhale, tuck your chin in. Inhale, halfway lift, hands come to the shins, long spine. Exhale, plant the hand, step it back, plant pose. You can lower knees, chest, chin like we did earlier, or full chaturanga. Inhale for cobra, bringing the pelvis down, shoulders move away from the ears, or up dog, arms straight, legs off the ground. Exhale, downward facing dog. Go ahead and pedal it out here, bending into one knee and then the other. We call this walking the dog. So walk your dog a little bit. Maybe hips or heels come to one side, hips to one side to get a stretch along the side body. Take any movement you need to take. And then inhale, lift the right leg to the sky. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Shoulders come over wrist. Use the core to keep the leg lifted. Inhale, takes you back, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to left elbow, shoulders over wrist. Inhale, back, three-legged dog. Exhale, plant the right foot between the hands. Start to get a little bit light in the left foot here as you bring that foot off the ground for standing splits. And then bring hands to heart center, warrior three. Breathing here. Bring the right hand down to the ground. You can bend the right knee if you need to. Left hand to the left hip and then peel the left hip on top of the right for half moon pose. Float the left arm up to the sky. See if you can gaze up. Flex the left toes back towards you. Activate the left leg by you're pressing it into a wall behind you. If you want to challenge, float right hand to heart center. Breathe. And then with as much control as possible, we're going to bend the right leg, that standing leg, and plant the left foot behind us, warrior two. So adjust your stance here. Front heel intersects arch of the back foot. We're trying to get the front thigh parallel to the ground, but we want to avoid the knee in front of the ankle. So keep your stance wide enough so that the knee's over the ankle. Move through the outer edge of the back foot, gaze over the front fingers. Inhale, tilt you back. Peaceful warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Right elbow to knee, left arm starts up and over. I really want to spin the right ribs towards the sky here. Reach the left arm long, growing long in the left side body. You can stay here. You can bring the right hand to the ground. You can go for a half bind. Left hand comes behind for the right thigh or a full bind. Take three big breaths wherever you've decided to go. For three, for two, and one. Lower the left hand down in front of you, and then take a little swivel over to the middle of the mat. Bend the right or the left leg and straighten the right. It's Gandasa. And we'll flow side to side like this. So you can stay like this if you want an added challenge, hands to heart center. That helps engage the core a little bit more. Yeah. And then next time you bend into the right leg, come back to center, parallel the feet. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold wide-legged forward fold, press through your Padottanasana. Hands are on the ground here, or if it feels more comfortable for you to grab your ankles, you can grab your ankles. You can take peace fingers around the big toes. You can walk your hands back, turning the fingers behind you, backing yourself a little bit closer. You want to soften the knees, root through the outer edges of the feet here. Tuck the chin in and gaze up at the belly button. And don't forget your breath. And on your next inhale, 
inhale, you're going to come halfway up, bringing the hands back under the shoulders. You're going to turn the right toes back to the front of the mat. Coming into a lunge here. Left hand is going to root under the left shoulder. Right arm is going to float up. And then we're coming into side plank. So we're going to start to walk the right foot into the middle of the mat. Rolling on to the outside of the left foot. You can stay there. Or right foot on top of the left. Lift the hips up. Gaze up. Try to create as much space as you can between your hips and the ground. Breathe. For three. Lift a little higher, too. And one plant the right hand next to the left for plank pose and take your vinyasa. Big breath in. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, left leg's going to lift to the sky. Exhale, bring the left foot between the hands. Inhale, guys, you up. High lunge. Exhale, draw the knee, the right knee into the chest. Inhale, back high lunge. Exhale, draw it in. And begin moving like this with your own breath. Maybe bring the arms back behind the elbows, back behind you. Maybe you want to straighten the right leg, taking a little kick. Shaking away all that fear, all that anxiety. This crazy world is creating right now. The next time that you bring your right knee up, sustain. Left hand on the left hip. Right hand comes to the right knee. You can take this or you can take the scarf around the ball of the right foot and straighten the leg. Or final option, piece fingers around the right big toe. Straightening the leg out. Keep your gaze forward. You want to find the dristi, something non-moving to stare at. Bring the right shoulder down and back. Shoulders over hips, so try not to lean back or forward here with the torso. Couple breaths. We're going to take our gaze over to the left now and our foot to the right. So coming into this variation of Uttita Sapanamustasana. You can float the left hand if you want. Breathing here for three, for two. One inhale, it back to center. Try to keep the foot right where it is and lift the arm. So if your knee's bent, that's okay. Just keep it lifted for three, for two, nice. And then it's a warrior, three hands to heart center, swing the right foot back. Breathing. Right toes face the ground. Plant the right foot down, warrior one. In warrior one, our hips are on separate train tracks. Our feet are on separate train tracks, so our hips are square. Arms active, reaching up. Interlace the hands behind you. Press the hands down for the chest, open, look up, inhale. Exhale, bow into yourself. Left shoulder inside the left knee. Crown of the head works its way towards the ground. Arms work their way up overhead. Eventually, the crown of the head is going to reach the ground. So just keep that intention in your mind. The left hip wants to pop out here, so draw it back in line with the left knee. Relax your head, neck, jaw, breathe. Rinsing the shoulders out, letting go of that tension there. And then lower the hands down to the ground. Step the back foot in a few inches and straighten the front leg for pyramid pose. Legs are straight here. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold chin towards the shin. You can stay here. Option to walk the hand, turn the fingers back and walk the hands back towards the back leg. Option to grab right side with your hands. Keep drawing the left hip back, right hip forward, chin to the shin. And then the hands are going to come back down to the mat. If they're lifted, we're going to bring the back knee to the mat. So stepping that right foot back a few inches, lower the right knee down. And then straighten the front leg. So half split pose. You want to keep the hips 
over or in front of the right knee. Draw the left toes back towards you, and then maybe start to slide the left foot out. Going as far as it feels good to you. Wherever you are, inhale, lengthen the spine, and exhale, fold, chin towards the left shin. Breathing here, keep drawing the left toes back towards you. Softening where you can. Relax the head, shoulders, jaw. And then inhale guides you up. Go ahead and bend back into the front knee. And then we're going to tick tock the left foot across the mat. So it's similar to that pigeon prep. We're going to swing on to the left hip and bring the right foot around. So we're ready for a seated twist now. Root the sit bones underneath you. Right knee's pointing up, right foot's planted on the ground. Left foot is by the right hip. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, twist to the right. Bring the left elbow outside the right knee. That's it. And gaze over the back shoulder. Press the elbow to knee to get a little more depth in your twist. Every inhale, lengthen the spine. Crown of the head reaches up. Every exhale, twist a little further. Three big breaths. For three, for two, and one. Gently unwind. Here's a funny transition. So we're going to unwind all the way around, plant our hands on the left side, and then keep the feet where they are. Just walk the hands all the way around in a circle. So then you're seated in the same pose on the other side. Nice. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Left knee is pointing up, left foot on the ground, right foot next to the right hip. I mean, right foot next to the left hip. Inhale, reach the arms up, exhale, twist. So again, gazing over the back shoulder, right elbow outside the left knee. Every inhale, lengthen the spine, every exhale, twist. And then we'll gently unwind. Bring the legs out in front of you. Feet plant hips with distance, hands behind your fingers, facing forward for altar pose or reverse tabletop. Lift the pelvis up, try to create a straight line from your knees to your shoulders. Let the head hang, the neck open up. Root through all four corners of your feet. Lift the hips as high as the low, press them to the ceiling. Let the head hang, neck relaxes. Release your glutes, take a couple more breaths. And then keep the head where it is, lower the sit bones first, then lift the head. Then draw the knees into the chest and take a little rock along the length of your spine. Rocking and rolling, rocking and rolling. Eventually, get enough momentum to find chair pose. Try not to use your hands as you come into chair. So rock all the way forward, plant the feet, and Nice. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant your hands, vinyasa. Come back to the breath in this vinyasa. Let it reset the mind. Notice how your down dog feels. Next, inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, left knee to left elbow, shoulders come over wrist. Inhale, take you back, three-legged dog. Exhale, cross the body, knee to right elbow. Inhale, back, three-legged dog. Exhale, plant the left foot between the hands. So we're going to keep our gaze forward here as we start to get light in the right foot, finding standing splits. Right toes face the ground, and then gently float the torso up for warrior three. Hands can pray at heart center or for an added challenge. Arms reach out by the ears. We're trying to create a T-shape with the body. Left leg's working. Feel it work. 
And then the left hand's gonna come to the ground, bend the knee as much as you need to, right hand to the right hip. We're gonna peel the hips open to the right side of the mat for half moon pose. So stack the right hip on top of the left and then float the left, right arm up. Embracing whatever wobbles may come your way here. They're helping you learn to balance. Sometimes we have to fall in order to fly. Again, for an added challenge, left hand to heart center, we breathe. With as much control as possible, we're gonna plant the right foot behind us for warrior two. Woo. So adjust your stance here again, front heel intersects arch to the back foot. You can see your left big toe inside the knee, knees over or behind the ankle, arms reaching in both directions, gaze over the front fingers, shoulders move away from the ears. Feel the rootedness in your feet. Allow that to make the upper body feel a little buoyant here. And it's an inhale that gets, takes us back to peaceful warrior. And it's an exhale that takes us to extended side angle. Left elbow in the knee, right arm up and over again. Left ribs want to turn towards the sky. And that right arm is going to reach, 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 lengthen the right side body. So any version you took on the other side, feel free to take it here. Whether that was a half bind, Left hand down or full bind. Three big breaths. Inhale. Exhale, one. Two. And three. Right hand's gonna come down to the mat. We're gonna swivel to face the long edge of the mat. I'm turning around just so you can see what I'm doing. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. From here, if you want to play the tripod headstand, you can bring the crown of the head to the ground. Draw one knee onto the upper arm bone and then the other, if that's your thing. Another option is a sweet little shoulder rinse, interlacing the hands behind you. Drawing the chin in, allowing the neck to relax, the jaw to relax. Another option is to plant the right hand down, sweep the left arm up, finding a twist. Take that a few breaths and then take the other side. So play around. You can also take Skandasana again if you want, bending into one knee and straightening the opposite leg. You have a few options. I just want to give you some time to kind of listen to what your body needs. We will all meet in that forward fold. Whenever you're ready. And then the left toes are going to turn towards the front of the mat. We're going to swivel around into a lunge. Right hand's going to plant down. Left arm's going to sweep up. And then we just come into side plank pose. So start to walk the left foot into the middle of the mat, coming onto the outside of the right foot. And then eventually maybe left foot floats on top of the right. We're getting really long in, I mean, we're creating a lot of space in between the hip, hips and the ground. You wanna make sure your right wrist is under your right shoulder. So if it's out a little bit, you wanna readjust and bring it right under, that's your foundation. Two more breaths, lift the hips high, gaze up. And then plant the left hand at the front of the mat, take your vinyasa. Inhale, right leg's going to lift to the sky. Exhale, plant the right foot between the hands. Inhale, up high lunge. And here we go with this kick. So inhale, and as you exhale, knee in. We begin to take this at our own pace, drawing in whatever movement we did on the other side. Use the core to lift the leg. Maybe guiding in those kicks. Whatever obstacles are in your way, just Kick it out. And next time that the knee comes up, we're going to sustain. Right hand to right hip, left hand to the knee, or scarf around the ball of the foot, or piece fingers around the left big toe. Straightening the leg here. 
So you can see the left shoulder wants to creep forward, so draw it down and back. Breathing here. Find that dristy. Settle the breath, settle the mind. Gaze over the right shoulder, take the foot to the left. Maybe right hand floats. Bring it back to center. Try to keep the foot right where it is, so really draw the belly in to engage the core here, and then float the arms. For three, for two, and one, warrior three. Bring the hips and the shoulders to the ground. Left toes face the ground, T-shape with the body. And then it's a warrior one. Plant the left foot behind you, feet are on separate train tracks. Right knee's bent over the right ankle. Inhale. Exhale, interlace your hands behind you. Find your second favorite grip, so bring your other thumb on top. Press the hands down for the chest. Open, look up. Inhale. Exhale, bow in. Lower. Crown of the head reaches towards the ground. Right shoulder inside the right knee. Arms work their way up overhead. Soften it. Tendency is to keep the head lifted here. But see if you can let it hang so that the neck can relax, and that will help the shoulders to relax and rinse out. Draw the right hip back in line with the right knee. A couple more breaths. And then we'll plant the hands down either right side of the front foot. We're going to set the back foot in a few inches, straightening both legs for pyramid pose. You want to draw the right hip back in line with the left. Probably it's poked forward a little bit. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Again, you can walk your hands back if you want. You can grab the back thigh if you want. Chin towards the shin. And then hands are going to come either side of the front foot. We're going to wiggle the back foot back and lower the back knee. And then straighten the right leg for a split or half split. So maybe it's just here today and that's totally fine. Flex the right foot back towards you. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. If you feel like sliding it out, you can go for that. Something more that looks more like a full split. Probably if you're like me, one side feels a little different than the other. So just honor where you're at. Keep drawing the right toes back towards your face. Relax the neck, shoulders, jaw. It's so easy to start to tense up the upper body. See if you can soften. And then we're going to bend back into the front knee. And a little tick-tock of the foot across the mat. So it's like pigeon prep here. Right shin comes to the front. We're going to swing out of the right hip. This time, taking fire log pose. So we're going to bring the left ankle on top of the right knee. The right knee on top of the left ankle. You might want your scarf here. We're coming also into a little shoulder stretch. And if you're having a hard time getting the knees, the legs to, to stack in this parallel fire log fashion. You can bring a blanket or a pillow underneath that left knee. Take the scarf into the left hand. Bring the left hand behind you. Elbows facing up. Right hand's going to come to the left shoulder or left elbow and guide that left hand further down your back. And then right arm's going to come around to grab the other end of the scarf. So when you have both ends of the scarf, both hands connected, you start to just walk the hands up and down the scarf. You can pull down, you can pull up. You start to try to get the hands to eventually clasp, and you can release the scarf if that's the case. So from here, you can stay right where you're at. This feels like it's enough of a stretch for you. If you want to go deeper 
Inhale, lengthen and exhale, fold. Couple more deep breaths. Where can you let go? Where can you soften? Maybe it's mentally, maybe you're beating yourself up for having tight hips or tight shoulders. Let it go. Next inhale is gonna guide you up. And we have that crazy transition. So from here, the left foot's gonna plant on the outside of the left thigh. Hands come to the left side. Feet stay pretty much where they're at. And we turn around all the way to the front of the mat again. Nice. You got it, beautiful. So now the left shin's on the bottom. The right ankle stop uh, is uh, stacked on top of the left knee and shins line up like fire logs or pillow underneath if you need a little support. Grab the scarf with the right hand, right hand reaches up and back, left hand helps the right elbow down and then the hands come around to clasp. Maybe, or maybe they're holding onto the scarf. Either way, it's totally fine. So a lot of times when we're doing this pose, we tend to round the spine because we're trying to get that that connection, see if you can keep the spine nice and long. And inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold. Check in with your jaw, with your face, with your neck. See where you can release. And next inhale is going to guide you up. Undo your bind, undo your legs. Bending the knees here, grab the outsides of your feet. Draw the torso to the thighs. Glue the torso to the thighs here. We're coming into Paschimottanasana forward fold. We want to try to keep the connection of torso to thigh as we walk the feet out. And so once we start to feel the torso moving away from the thighs, that's where we're going to stay. So your knees might be a little bent. And that's okay. We're going to inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold, and then draw the chin towards the shins. Next inhale is going to guide us up, keep the legs straight, reach the arms out, crown of the head reaches up, spine grows long, draw the belly in, and gently lower halfway, halfway down, pull, for three, for two, one, come back up, lower down, slowly halfway, holding here, for three, for two, for one, come back up. And last one, lower all the way down, go as slowly as you can, coming all the way onto your back. Ah. Bend the knees and plant the feet, hips with distance, preparing for bridge pose. Press into the feet to lift the pelvis up. So my knees are right over my ankles here. My thighs are working towards each other, not together, but they're staying in line with the hips. And then shimmy the shoulder blades together underneath you, clasp the hands if that's available. If it's not available, that's okay, just press the hands into the earth. Wherever you are, press the hands into the earth. Press the knees towards the front of the mat, press the chest towards the chin, press the crown or the back of the head into the ground, creating more space between the chin and the chest. Release your glute muscles. It might mean that you lower down a little, but just press into the feet to lift. Use the legs to lift instead of the glutes. Breathe 360 degrees into the chest. Two more breaths. And then unclasp the hands if they're clasped. 
Shimmy the hips back to the ground. Tick tock the knees side to side. And from here, I'm going to give you time for Yogi's Choice. So if you want another back bend, you can do that. Maybe you'd like a little happy baby pose here. Maybe you'd like a supine twist, bringing one knee across the body, taking several breaths there, and then doing the same thing on the opposite side. Maybe you need a shoulder stand or a leg straight up, finding an inversion. Inversions are really nice because they help to reduce stress and anxiety, so I've been taking my legs up the wall every day during this crazy time. It's been really good. So find what works for you. And wherever you are, begin to deepen your breath. Allowing the breath to Bring you a little bit more into the pose. Physically, yes, deepening the pose, but also mentally letting you be present. Take your time and moving through whatever you need to move through here. Just remember if you're doing something on one side to do it on the other. Remember your counter stretches. So for shoulder stand, that's fish pose. And for head stand, that's child's pose. For a pigeon, that's down dog. Our meeting place will be Shavasana or Maybe legs up the wall. Take your time getting there. For legs up the wall, you can just bring your mat to whatever wall space you have. You can bring your hip to the wall. So I'm sitting on the very edge of my mat here. And then I'm going to lower the opposite elbow to the ground as I swivel the legs up. So this is a great way to end class today if you want to do this. Or if you have a few, mo a few minutes at the you know, middle in your afternoon or whatever, right before bed, this also helps with insomnia. So it's good to get the legs up. There's a lot of benefits. So feel free to take that pose. If it's too much on your hamstrings, you can bend the knees, plant the feet on the wall. You can also take a variation with the legs in straddle or in butterfly. And if that's not available to you right now, just go ahead and stretch long in Shavasana whenever you're ready. So legs go long and wide and the feet fall out to the side. And arms go wide, and palms face the sky. Just bringing some stillness into your practice today.
wherever you are. You might turn the head side to side so you can find that perfect resting spot for your skull. Letting the neck relax. And you might run the tongue around the front of the teeth to let the jaw relax. You might close the eyes, encouraging the mind to relax as we guide in some deep breaths here. More than likely the mind will wander during this pose. Our minds were made to think, so that's what they do best. So for now, I'll see if you can just watch the thoughts come in and let them go. Try not to spend too much time on one thought. Just allow the breath to be that constant reminder to be present. And to deepen your breath, letting the mind come back to the space that is the miracle of your body. Allow your attention to travel out to your fingers and toes and begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, waking the body back up. Move and stretch in any way that feels good to you. Eventually letting the knees come into the chest, finding a big, big hug of gratitude for yourself. For showing up today and doing something good for you. And then gently roll to one side, pausing in fetal position. Take a moment just to recall the intention you set at the beginning of class. Maybe set an intention for the rest of your day. Maybe it's just to be more present. Maybe it's just to take breaks throughout the day to find mindfulness, move away from the news and social media. You're just honoring yourself in another way. And then keeping those intentions in mind, gently guide yourself up to a comfortable seat, keeping the eyes closed or a soft gaze. 
With those intentions in mind, we're going to sweep the arms up overhead. Again, taking a big breath in as we send it out, palms meet. Exhale, hands to heart, drawing in some love for yourself, for your world. Big breath in through the nose. Open mouth, let it go. Inhale for OM. Thank y'all so much for being here and sharing this practice with me today. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Namaste. As always, I welcome feedback and your input.